Hey guys, it's me, Jack, and I'm back with another review. Well, I've had a history of reviewing King Kong movies on this channel, so I figured it was about time that I get my thoughts out on the two latest King Kong movies. Starting with Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, I must say, when this movie was announced, I was quite excited. The only movie that we had where Kong and Godzilla fought each other was the 1962 Toho movie. So I was looking forward to see what they could do with this concept, with the technology that they have now. In this film, a bunch of humans take King Kong to a place known as the Hollow Earth, where his species originated from. They are in search of an energy source that could be used to defeat Godzilla, as Godzilla and Kong must fight over who gets to be the dominant titan. A common criticism for pretty much all of the MonsterVerse movies is that the human characters are not very interesting. And with this film, I will admit they are better. They're not great, but they're an improvement. Some are definitely better than others. For example, the characters of Dr. Lind and Dr. Andrews aren't the most compelling characters. But with how they're used in the story, you don't really care that much because for most of the movie, they are with Kong on his journey to the Hollow Earth. There's the character of Gia, a young deaf girl, who communicates with Kong via sign language. She's the only human character who Kong feels any real connection to. In a way, she's the Andero of this movie. Simple moments like her little finger touching against Kong's enormous finger are really sweet, but where the human characters in the A plot are tolerable, the characters in the B plot are not so much. Maddie, Josh, and Bernie are all very uninteresting characters. And the big issue is that pretty much all of their scenes are just them. They aren't interacting with Godzilla or Kong. Which wouldn't be as big of a problem if they were more interesting, but they really aren't. There's a lot of moments where they try to be funny, and it just doesn't work. But the big problem is that their whole storyline could have easily been cut out of the movie and nothing would be different. They barely impact the story at all. They do some investigating and find out that this organization is building a robot Godzilla. And then they just stand by and watch as it malfunctions and goes crazy. They don't really do much to stop it, other than pour some alcohol on its controls. And yeah, that makes it malfunction a little bit, but I don't know, I think Kong and Godzilla could have easily defeated it without them. Of course, the real stars of the movie are the monsters. In particular, Kong. This is very much Kong's movie. Godzilla is still in it, but not that much. He's more of an ominous building threat. And considering that I'm a much bigger fan of Kong, I don't mind this at all. Kong is wonderfully portrayed in this movie. This was the point when I officially fell in love with this interpretation of Kong. In Kong Skull Island, not only was he not in it that much, but most of his scenes were just him doing cool stuff. They tried to give him some humanity, but it didn't work that much. But here, not only do they give him humanity, but they do it in a very unexpected way that hasn't been done before. They have him communicate through sign language. This was a really cool idea. I definitely think it would be too much to just have Kong talk. That would just be goofy. But I do like the idea of him communicating. The special effects work on him is also outstanding and they give him a lot of emotion on his face. You're invested in his journey, as the humans are taking him to the Hollow Earth, to discover where his kind came from. And when Kong goes down there and returns to his ancestral home, it's quite powerful. Of course, for a movie called Godzilla vs. Kong, you have to have some good battles between the two monsters. And this movie really does deliver on that. Their first fight happens when Kong is being transported via ship, and Godzilla attacks him. What's great about this scene is that it shows how Kong is out of his environment. The ocean is Godzilla's domain, 
And when the two of them are fighting in the water, it's clear that Godzilla has the upper hand. Kong is always trying to get out of the water and back onto the ship. Kong has something of a personal stake in this fight, though, because he doesn't want the humans to get hurt, especially Gia. We get some great moments, like Kong punching Godzilla right in the face, as if they're having a boxing match, or Godzilla blasting his atomic breath from out under the water, and Kong jumping away from it. It's like a remake of the iconic scene in Die Hard, but with King Kong. The final battle in the city is also really cool. Not only is the cinematography and camera work great, but there are lots of really great fun moments throughout. Kong trying to break Godzilla's jaw just like the original King Kong did with the T-Rex, only for Godzilla to breathe his atomic breath, forcing Kong to let go. Kong leaping on the buildings and using them to bring his axe down on Godzilla. Kong using the top of a building as a shield against Godzilla's breath. Kong throwing a construction crane over Godzilla as a distraction. It's a really funny moment. Godzilla's just like, hey, what's that? And then Kong attacks him while he's not looking. Of course, we can't forget Godzilla's evil smile. Yeah, I can understand if some people find it a little cheesy, but this movie clearly doesn't take itself too seriously, so I'm fine with it. At the end, Godzilla has Kong pinned down and roars in his face, trying to get him to submit. But Kong just roars back at him, showing that he won't go down. And in a nice moment, Godzilla actually decides to spare him, as if he respects Kong's bravery. Of course, then Mecha Godzilla shows up, and he starts kicking Godzilla's ass. It's great when Kong comes to the rescue, and Godzilla has a look of shock on his face. His archenemy is now helping him. And it really is awesome seeing these two icons work together. I especially love when Godzilla blasts his atomic breath into King Kong's axe, giving it the power to destroy Mechagodzilla. However, while it is awesome seeing Kong rip Mechagodzilla apart, a part of me does feel like Godzilla should have delivered the final blow. I mean, this isn't Mecha Kong, this is Mechagodzilla. It's his enemy. It would make more sense for Godzilla to defeat him. I also love the scene after, where you think they're going to go back to fighting, only for Kong to drop his axe, and for Godzilla to go back into the ocean. The two of them have put aside their rivalry and destroyed an even bigger threat. At the end of the day, Godzilla vs. Kong is very entertaining. I do think it could have been shorter and more simplified to focus mainly on the monsters. But for what it is, I'm going to give Godzilla vs. Kong a 6 out of 10.